When most people think of hunting desert bighorn sheep, they think of incredibly expensive outfitted hunts in the desert regions of the U.S. and Mexico. There are some opportunities available for the lucky few who draw limited tags in some states. Good friend Chris Nowak was a lucky lottery winner for such a tag in our home state of Colorado. Got sheep right over here. Let the user in the way. Victory begins with a single step. It is formed in strategy, tested by adversity, and forged with an iron will. But for victory to be pure, it must be earned. Join host Willie Schmidt on an epic quest to rediscover the last best pure hunts that are accessible to everyone, if they're willing to go the extra mile. Pure Hunting is brought to you by Browning, the best there is. Winchester, the American legend. Onyx Maps, visualize success. And by Spothog, the world's toughest archery products. ESP, your hearing matters. And by Tenzing Packs, go further, hunt longer. High Mountain Seasoning. Make your own jerky, sausage, smoked meats, and more. And by Outdoor Edge Swing Blade. The swing blade with two blades in one to open game like a zipper. Colorado reintroduced the desert bighorn sheep to the western part of the state in the late 1970s. There are a couple of huntable herds and one of them resides among the cliffs along the Colorado River. These are your canoes. They are. Fantastic. After Chris confirmed he drew the tag, he spent several weekends over the summer scouting and arrived at his hunting spot several days early to set up camp and do some final scouting. Damon and I, we are about 100 yards from my campsite and after we put it up, you know, we're gonna come up here and do a little scouting. And there is sheep, literally 150 yards? Yep, right here, right out of camp. A small right. ram and two ewes, it looks like. Now we're gonna go up high and see if we can find some bigger ones. Got everything tied down. Gonna be floating down the river here for the next hour and a half. Start with our major voyage downstream. So 2014 desert sheep hunt. So excited. The day before the opener, Chris meets the canoe rental company, unloads the canoes, and heads downstream to the camp he has already set up with his local friend, Damon Larson. Got sheep right over here on top of the mesa. Hopefully uh, they'll still be there when we get up there. As Chris nears camp, the anticipation of opening morning builds with sheep just a few hundred yards away. As he beaches the canoe at camp, it looks like he has set his camp in the right spot. Just look above camp and there's one, two, three, four. It looks like there's about eight sheep. Kind of like a couple of days ago when I was setting up the camp, we had a couple of rams and uh, some ewes just right here in you know, 150 yards. I'm up on a ledge scouting just above camp. And there's a ram standing on a cliff over here. He's uh, seven eighths, real heavy on the base, probably 15, 15 and a half. Definitely a shooter. Oh yeah, he's definitely a shooter. After Chris and Damon glass this nice ram, they continue to scout and come across a find that is awesome but discouraging, as it shows the growing predation in the area. There's some bones, dude. You see some bones? Holy cow. What? Look at the score, dude. Look at this. What did you find? Oh my God. You know how rare that is? Oh, dead ram, dude. Is that probably a lion kill? Definitely. Being tucked up underneath the tree like this, he probably had it drug up inside the tree at one point and was just eating on it. Some claw marks back here in the tree. The lion predation in here is it's horrible. It's such rough country to get the houndsmen in here to, to chase these lions that they're thriving on these sheep and just wiping our herd out. 10 years ago, you could float down this river and see 100 sheep, and now you're lucky to see 20 or 10. Well, here's the reason why, right here. Well, let's get back to scouting, and at least we have an unbelievable trophy for today's scouting trip. Breakfast of champions. Well, I don't see any sheep right away this morning. It's opening morning. We had a little weather and rain last night, 
Still some storm clouds in the area, and I'm sure it'll be on and off intermittent kind of squalls coming through, but hopefully those sheep that we saw last night are just sitting on one of the bluffs right here. As the light of day gets brighter, Chris loads his pack with the last minute essentials and heads up the mountain. He starts off in the direction the sheep from last night appear to be headed. As Chris gets to the top of the ridge, he spots the sheep from last night. They have moved off to a hillside about a half a mile away with a canyon separating him from the sheep. I got the first ridge here. I found that group of sheep from last night. They're up on a steep face over here, but it looks like we might be able to approach them from the backside. Shoot down the cliff. One, two, three, four, five. And there was nine sheep last night. So there's four, three or four more that are up there that we can't locate yet that you know are gonna be in some kind of a lookout position. Alrighty. Chris heads down the ridge and up the necks towards the sheep. As he gets closer, the terrain gets steeper and more difficult to navigate. As he tops the next ridge, he hopes to see the group of sheep he started stalking, but instead gets a nice surprise with another group of sheep. Jeez, we're surrounded by sheep. There's 16 years right there. We got to within 45 yards. Found a nice little shed, matching set. Uh, not a monster mule deer, but a nice little shed. Gonna head back that way, and uh, we've seen these two groups. Confirm there's no rams. We're gonna go chase that other group. Chris leaves the group of ewes and lambs to continue the stock on the first group of sheep he saw. There was at least one mature ram in that band, and he's hoping they are still there. I got some sheep spotted up here, the ones that we had earlier in the morning. I dropped my pack. I'm gonna make a stock on it. We'll see how it goes. They are. They're bunching up. I don't have a shot or anything from here. They're only about 100 yards away and they're just clumped up standing on this ledge. So they're kind of trapped, I think. I'm gonna go around and try to come down straight on top of them. That's all I've got, so I'm gonna give it a try. There they are. They know something's here, but they don't know what. All right, they're moving. Come on. Okay, there he is. Oh shoot, it's a quarter and two shot. It's a bad angle. Oh no, we're spooking a little bit. Come on, come on. I don't know if they saw me. Oh shoot, there they go. Oh shoot. 30 yards. First dog, first encounter. I just didn't want to take that shot. And then they moved up. I thought they would stop, but they didn't. They just kept going. You know, I had my opportunity, but it wasn't a good shot, so. Well, we want to work our way back to camp. Maybe spot some of that high country we saw the use today. Maybe those other rams have moved in, and maybe go get a little catfish for uh, lunch. Close. Scent Defense. 100% all natural and 100% DEET free, with the power to attract deer with its sweet citrus aroma. Scent Defense. The all-in-one technology that kills human odor, repels insects, and attracts deer naturally. Chris had a great encounter on the first day of his desert bighorn sheep hunt. He nearly sealed the deal on his first stalk, but at only 30 yards, the ram didn't provide the shot Chris needed before running off with the group. As Chris prepares for the morning of day two, another group of hunters pass him and his camp on the river, knowing there are sheep in the area. Other sheep hunters just came by. Talking about their game plan, what they were gonna do. They're gonna hit the river and then part of the outfitter over here is packing up. A lot of rain last night. I don't know if that's gonna affect the sheep as far as whether or not they gotta come down to the river or not, but uh, we'll find out. Gonna go find them. Chris heads up the mountain, hoping to find sheep before the other hunters do. He heads up to the area where he saw the two bands of sheep yesterday. But before he can really glass the area, the weather turns for the worse and he needs to lose elevation and seek shelter. 
little squall coming in. Got up off the top beneath you, down in this little ravine. Dropped a couple hundred feet, so hopefully we'll be safe from any lightning. Oh, this is the desert. Sure hasn't been acting much like a desert. Rain every day. Guess it's better than 10 degrees and snowstorm. The rain finally lets up, but it's late in the day and Chris has little time to spot sheep. Even though he had shelter, his clothes are wet and he decides to head back to camp through the mud without spotting any sheep for the day. The next morning, the clouds finally give way to the sun and Chris prepares for the day's hunt. The sun's just come out here in the last hour and a half, two hours, kind of dried everything out. Looking forward to getting back to the hunt. Hopefully this afternoon, get up here, go back to a couple of our glassing spots and hopefully we can see something. Weather report says maybe for the next couple days we're gonna have some clearer weather. All right, back at it. Chris heads out to one of his known lookout spots where he had spotted sheep earlier in the hunt. They were right up here. They're not there today. Keep going. Not finding sheep, Chris continues on heading to different high spots to glass the distant hillsides and canyons for sheep. He spends time glassing at one location, then moves to another after not seeing any sheep. Sheep right over here, some ewes. There's no rams in them. Rams checked their calendar and knew uh, the season was about to start. Well, I glassed up here for several hours tonight and nothing. A couple deer, I guess somewhat disappointing, I guess. I mean, yes, there's millions of little crooks and crannies and all kinds of stuff where they could be, but I don't think I'll be coming back here tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm gonna head maybe over into the Mee Canyon direction, but at least it's gonna be a nice night tonight. No rain, get an early start tomorrow, cover a lot of ground on foot and also on glass. Gotta find the rams. They know the season's on now, so they're making a hunt out of it. Got a couple more days. Hopefully I can get lucky and come across something. Head back to camp now and hit it again tomorrow. Right. Chris heads back to camp, and as he looks at the mountains in the distance, he realizes that the weather he has had could have been much worse. Looks like we got a little snow over here in the distance. Glad we just had rain. There's snow right over there. Quite a storm that's camped through in the last 48 hours. I'm glad it's over. We've been using the razor blades and a lot of the Outdoor Edge knives in the field for skinning and gutting, but we're really excited to put the Outdoor Edge game processing kits to use. We just came back from Texas, we got five hogs, and we gotta cut the pork chops and the hams and everything else. We're gonna put this to use tonight. There's a skinner, a butcher, a fillet knife, they have bone shears, they got a rib spreader, got all the different kinds of knives that you'll need for any kind of home processing. It's a great tool, great kit. Oh, look at that. Fresh wild boar. That's phenomenal. Good? Oh my God, that's really good. That is wonderful. With clear skies overnight, the morning dawns much colder than the previous ones and leaves heavy frost over everything in camp. Well, it's a chilly morning. We got a lot of ice on the tents and the table. Gonna head up maybe to Meat Canyon, but I thought maybe I'd just kind of glass around here. Just kind of see if we see anything before we leave. It's a nice, beautiful morning. We had all those lambs right down over here. Oh my God. Oh man, I see something. It looks like there's three rams. Oh my gosh. Right here from camp, I see three rams. One of them, little banana, medium, and then a, a, definitely a shooter, two shooters out of three. Okay, well, we're doing a quick change of plans here. We're not even gonna have breakfast. I'll let them go disappear over the other side and then put the chase on. I'll go up the second cut over here. All those ewes were right there yesterday, so that must be the scent trail they're trying to follow. All right, we're going. Grab our stuff. Got food, I got water. Range finders in my pocket. Oh, it'd be nice to get her done today. All right, let's go. Chris makes his move on the group of sheep. He has to work way around the sheep to get the wind right before moving in closer, hopefully getting a chance at a shot. I'm up on top of the ridge where I can kind of see the top of this little bluff. Got some deer over here feeding. My gut tells me that they're down here. So I'm gonna drop my pack, sneak up over this ridge only a couple of yards and then I'll be able to see. Try not to blow these deer out. I 
Chris keeps trying to close the distance, but the terrain is not offering him many options to work his way closer. He keeps his eye on the sheep, trying to find a way to close the distance. Okay, we found him. We got a slight little draw between us and them. I might try to use the valley, come up to draw on the break. I got a feeling it's probably the three rams plus the 25 odd use. I'm going to back up. Chris has a group of sheep with a couple of mature ram spotted. The sheep are situated in a spot making a final stock difficult due to the wide open terrain. Chris is running out of daylight, so he is trying hard to find a way to get closer. Yeah, I came down on him, went across the little draw, and now they're sitting up on this uh, bench. I try to work in a position here. You know, this is wide open country, so it's really tough. Chris backtracks to where he had been. With the sun getting ready to set, he decides to get more aggressive on his stock. They're just not in a spot where I can get to them. They finally got up and they're feeding again. They worked around the point of the draw next to us. I'm gonna get up to the top of this ridge here, follow it down, down over. Like I said, this is wide open country, so it's been real difficult to try to get close to them. Hey Pure Hunting fans, I really appreciate your support this season. To check out our new gear and watch episodes from seasons one through three, be sure to check us out on Facebook and our updated website, purehunting.com. This segment brought to you by Nose Jammer. Nose Jammer is the solution to hunting with shifting winds. Simply apply to your boots and clothes, the base of your tree, and in and around the tree limbs. This cloud of Nose Jammer jams an animal's ability to detect and track human odor. Jam them with Nose Jammer. Pure Hunting is sponsored by Fox Pro. High performance game calls. Hoyt. Get serious, get Hoyt. And by Wooden Stream. Outfitting adventures since 1957. Sportsman Guide. For everything to outfit your passion at the lowest prices guaranteed. Bog Pod. Versatility defined, accuracy anywhere. Bojax. The world's best designed archery dampening system. Top secret deer sense. Oxygen free from collection to bottle. And by these sponsors. They've seen me, they're getting nervous. They're getting nervous. They know I'm here. Okay, there's two rams. One in the front, I'm gonna take the one at the front. No, no, he's covered up. I'm gonna go to the one at the back, back ram. Clear, when the user on the way. Coming to the right, come on. All right, I've got an opening. The use moved, I'm taking him, I'm taking him. It's good hit, it's good hit, there he goes. Good hit, he's going up over the ridge. I see him. There he goes, there he goes. Oh, it's a good hit. Keep an eye on him. There he goes. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, oh man. Unbelievable. Wow, a desert sheep. I can't believe it finally came together. The sheep have moved off. He kept going over the ridge. I'm gonna go back, give him a little time to rest, get my flashlight, and then hopefully we'll get on the blood draw. I mean, it looked like a, just a, a perfect hit, so 
I think it's, uh, I think it's gonna be good. Well, it's been about an hour. You know, I shot that ram right at last light. Well, I got blood here. Uh, I don't have my arrow yet. Got a little drop of blood here. It's not bleeding real good. For a perfect shot, it sure, oh, here's my arrow. Arrow's here, a little bit of blood there. Track, a little bit of blood here. It looks like he came down this face. I would think he would be bleeding more, but he was moving. Must have come down past this rock here. Oh yeah, it's getting better. A little splatter here. Oh, here's real good. This is good. He can't be far. Oh my God, there he is. I see horns, horns right here. Oh my Lord. This is an unreal moment in my hunting career. Unbelievable, I drew the tag and was lucky enough to pursue these animals. I think this is gonna be the fourth archery killed desert sheep ever in the state of Colorado. Back to back sheep hunts in two years. What a gorgeous animal. Well, you know, I do want some real good pictures. I'll go back, get my sleeping bag and tent and just camp out next to him here just to protect him from any mountain lions, bobcats, coyotes, so I can cape them in the morning and tomorrow it's gonna get down in the high 20s, low 30s tonight so the meat will be fine. But yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> Got it done. The tag for this once in a lifetime license was for any weapon, but Chris hoped he could take a mature ram with his bow. Once he got done pinching himself that he actually drew the tag, he put the time in to scout, learn the country and the animals, and do all he could to prepare himself for the hunt. Even though he had to compete with some other hunters and had challenging weather, Chris stuck with it and was able to fulfill his dream of taking this unique animal with a bow in his home state of Colorado. Although extremely limited in number, anyone can apply for these tags and have their own classic pure hunting adventure.